Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where we will show you how to assign diaphragms in RAM frame. In this video, we're going to be focusing on incorporating horizontal braces into a level that contains a semi-rigid diaphragm. We will now turn our example model that's already been created in RAM structural system. Now this model contains two levels and the horizontal braces have already been created. Let's take a look at the 3D view, and I'm going to hide my decks just for now. Now, if I were to take a look at the upper level, you're going to notice that I have some horizontal braces that are basically framing between the horizontal lateral beams. If I take a look at the lower level of the structure, my horizontal braces are attached to the beam and column intersections. Now I'm going to exit out of the 3D view. I'm going to proceed on to RAM frame by clicking on the frame design icon in the design toolbar from my RAM manager screen. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna specify my diaphragm type. So I'm gonna come up to my criteria menu and I'm gonna select diaphragm. Now for this particular model, I'm going to create each level as a semi-rigid diaphragm. So I'm gonna select semi-rigid diaphragm for all of them and specify any diaphragm mesh constraints that I would like to incorporate. While I'm still in this dialog, let's go ahead and click on the disconnect button and see that our internal nodes of beams are disconnected from the diaphragm. This is our global criteria. Once we're done with the story diaphragm dialog, we're gonna go ahead and click okay. Now, after we do that, let's also go ahead and review how our nodes are connected to the diaphragm for our braces. So let's go ahead and click on the Assign button. We'll select Nodes and then Diaphragm Connection. Now, everything right now is currently set to the global criteria. But if I wanted to connect any particular nodes to the diaphragm, I can select the Connect Node to Diaphragm option, and then I can select the diaphragm I want to connect it to. Now for this particular roof level, I have it currently set to the global criteria, which means that the internal nodes are disconnected from the diaphragm. Now when we talk about the internal nodes, it's basically wherever a brace intersects a beam, which we do have that scenario with these horizontal braces. Now automatically, the beam and column joints that are within the diaphragm boundaries are gonna be connected to the diaphragm. And with that global criteria, these joints are not. If these joints are disconnected from the diaphragm, then more than likely I'm not going to be seeing any forces being transferred to those horizontal braces, and I am looking for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect those nodes to the diaphragm. The diaphragm I'm looking for is at the roof level, and let's go ahead and click Single. Now, as I take a look at this 3D view, I can very clearly see from the white dots that those horizontal braces are not connected to the diaphragm currently, if I would like to connect them, I can go ahead and click on those nodes. Now I'm going to expect to see some forces being transferred or resisted by these braces. Now once I've reviewed my diaphragm assignment and reviewed how my nodes are connected to the diaphragm, I'm ready to go ahead and perform my analysis. After the analysis is completed, I'm then going to go ahead and review some of my results. Now, some of the results I might be interested in are the forces that are transferred to those horizontal braces. To make this a little easier, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the view of some of my items in this model. And I may want to go ahead and rotate so I can see that lower level a little bit more clearly. Now, to view the member forces, I'm gonna to go to my results toolbar and select the member forces icon. Here I can select any of my loads in my model that were included in the analysis, and I'm gonna select my wind in my Y direction. I'm then gonna select the force I'm looking for, and what I'm trying to see is my axial force in my horizontal braces. So I'll go ahead and select the axial force, and I'm gonna select the braces and the beams options for the display. Once I'm ready, I can go ahead and click the Apply button, and I can see the axial force that has been transferred to the horizontal braces and the beam members. Now, 
what I'm going to notice is that axial loads are present in my horizontal braces at both levels of the structure. Now, that being said, we're going to consider a few different scenarios of perhaps I made some different assignments. What if I had assigned a rigid diaphragm at the first floor level, which is basically this level down here? If a rigid diaphragm had been assigned to this level, the horizontal braces at that level would not experience any axial load as the lateral loads are applied. Since rigid diaphragms do not deform, the distance between the ends of the horizontal braces, which span from column to column, would remain constant and no axial strain would be present in those members. Additionally, what would have happened had I not connected these horizontal braces to the diaphragm at the roof level? If the internal nodes of the roof level were disconnected from the diaphragm, the horizontal braces at that level would not be experiencing any axial loads as the lateral loads are applied. The end nodes of horizontal braces must be connected to the diaphragm if they are meant to distribute lateral loads to the vertical lateral force resisting system. This point, this concludes the process for analyzing a model that contains horizontal braces and reviewing the results or forces that might be present in those braces after the analysis. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.